Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation in two variables. We're not necessarily looking for integer solutions, so this is not a Diophantine equation. We're going to be looking for real solutions. So we have x to the power y equals y to the power 2x. We've done similar problems before. We've done x to the power equals y to the power x. I believe I've also made a short on that one. So, and the strategy is going to be pretty much the same here. So for these kinds of equations, and there are many more examples, we're going to replace y with something so that we can associate x and y. So the idea is kind of like end up with a single variable, but of course we have to introduce another variable, kind of like a parameter that we can, you know, change the values of so we can get infinitely many solutions. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph of this relation which is x to the power y equals y to the power 2x. So you'll kind of get to see what the graph looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to replace y with kx. So that's going to be the key to the solution. And we're going to do it in two places, here and here. Let's go ahead and do it. Replace y with kx and replace y with kx. So we're going to look at a couple different you know, options here. For example, what happens if x is equal to 0? Obviously, from the relationship, if x is 0, y will be 0. But let's totally forget about it and look at the original equation and see what happens with x equals 0. So if you replace x with 0 in the original equation, you get 0 to the power y equals y to the power 0. Now, 0 to the power y, as long as y does not equal 0, is going to be you know, uh, 0, right? Because 0 to the power 0 is indeterminate. So this is going to give us 0 if y does not equal 0. And y to the power 0 is going to give us 1 if y does not equal 0 again. So 0 equals 1, actually, not really. So this is not going to work. But the thing is, is 0, 0 a solution? Well, if you plug in 0, 0, you're going to get 0 to the power 0 equals 0 to the power 0, even though they're equal they're kind of indeterminate form, so that's ambiguous. Anyways, so we're going to assume that x does not equal 0. So we're going to start with that. If x does not equal 0, then we can do the following. We have x to the power kx. We can go ahead and raise it to the power 1 over x, which is going to cancel out the x. And then we can do the same thing on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and replace, I mean, raise both sides to the power 1 over x. And this x is this x is going to cancel out because they're supposed to be multiplied. So we end up with the following, x to the power k equals kx to the second power. All right, great. So what is kx to the second power equal to? It is equal to k squared x squared. Awesome. Now, we got x to the k equals k squared x squared. Now, we assume that k does not equal 0, right? So we're going to be looking for non-zero solutions for x. Now, what do we do from here? So we introduce a different variable k, but we want to solve for x and y. So let's kind of focus on solving for x at this point, because we don't have y now. How do you solve for x? Let's put all the x terms on the same side. In other words, divide both sides by x squared. That's going to give you x to the power k divided by x squared, which is x to the power k minus 2. You know, when we divide powers, we just subtract the exponents, and that is equal to k squared. Now, k is kind of like a dummy variable. We can play with it. We can change it. Um, anyways, it's also called a parameter. Now, we want to solve for x, and obviously, if k is equal to 2, you're going to get something interesting. x to the power 0 equals 4. Obviously, x to the power 0 is 1, because we know x does not equal 0, but 1 equals 4 nah, doesn't really work. So we have to assume k does not equal 2. If k does not equal 2, then we can basically raise both sides to the power 1 over k minus 2, right? That will be reasonable and doable. Because k does not equal 0, k minus 2 does not equal 0, so we can raise both sides to the power of 1 over k minus 2. These two cancel out. There's a obviously a reason for that because we want to isolate x from here, right? Our goal is to solve for x and y, remember? So from here we get x equals 
k to the power 2 to the power 1 over k minus 2. So what do you do with the exponents? Again, multiply them, right? So you're going to get, oops, and not x, that's k to the power 2 times 1 over k minus 2 is 2 over k minus 2. Remember, k does not equal 2 in this case. Great. So we got a solution for x, but how do you solve for y, right? Well, we do have a relationship between x and y. Remember, where did we get the k from? Okay, we said initially, hey, let's assume y equals kx. k is a real number. So what do you do? y equals kx, which is k times k to the power 2 over k minus 2, because that's what k, that's what x equals. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and combine these two things because k is k to the power 1. So y can be written as k to the power 1 plus 2 over k minus 2. And obviously that can be simplified because this is the same thing as k to the power k minus 2 plus 2 over k minus 2. Negative 2 and positive cancel out. And that gives us y equals k to the power k over k minus 2. And we have x equals k to the power 2 over k minus 2. Okay, great. So if you divide y by x, you get k because y equals kx. Awesome. So we got the solutions, right? And k does not equal 0 or 2. What happens if k is something else, right? For example, if k is equal to 1. And at the end of the uh, video, I'm going to show you a graph. On the graph, you're going to be able to see some particular solutions. But of course, the graph gives you all the solutions, right? Okay. So if k is equal to 1, we get 1 to the power anything, which is going to be 1. And this is also going to be 1. So we're going to get 1, comma 1 from k equals 1. Great. How about k equals 2? 2 is not allowed. Remember that. k equals 3. Let's test it out. If you replace k with 3, you're going to get x equals 9 and y equals 27. Just out of curiosity, let's go ahead and check this result. Remember, our original equation was x to the power y equals y to the power, I don't know why I'm writing 2, y to the power 2x. Replace x with 9 and y with 27. 9 to the power 27, is that equal to 27 to the power 2 times 9, which is 18? Well, this is 3 squared to the 27. This is 3 cubed to the 18. Both of them are 3 to the power 54, therefore they are equal. So it works. Obviously, this is not a proof by any means, but at least it shows you uh, that uh, one of the solutions that we found is valid. Okay? So obviously, there are more solutions. You can replace k with anything besides 0 or 2. You can replace k with even square root of 5 plus 9. Doesn't matter, 1 million, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick, real quick and then we will finish up. Okay, great. So here's the graph. And the graph of x to the power y equals y to the power 2x. So it's kind of like an interesting graph because it has two pieces as far as I can see. I didn't zoom out to look at any other pieces, but notice that x must be positive and y must be positive because those are the bases. Remember, when you have negative base, you run into problems. So. But interestingly, the graph has two different pieces, and the solutions that I gave you for different values of k, we already looked at 1, 1 and 9, 27, gives you these, and this one comes from another k value. Find out which k value I used for this one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.